Hi, this is a re-recording of an event that we did just uh, a little while ago earlier today, but we were ran into some technical difficulties. So rather than sending out uh, the event with some microphone uh, uh, issues, uh, I have re-recorded this event so that uh, all of the audio is crystal clear. So today we're talking about small pullbacks uh, and how those can lead to consistent profits. When I was a struggling trader, I was constantly thinking about money and profits, and that's what I was uh, mainly focused on. Uh, at some point along the line, towards the end of my, uh, what I thought was going to be the end of my trading career, I actually kind of had an epiphany, and I decided to start focusing instead of on profits and money, uh, uh, focusing on being a consistent trader and working on my consistency and figured, you know, profits will just show up if I can become consistent. So that was kind of a, a, a new perspective for me, uh, particularly for somebody who came into trading with a very narrow focus on what I thought trading was. So in today's markets, which which really makes more sense, the way the, the markets move today? You'll notice that it can be very difficult to sometimes get into a good, strong trend trade so that you can uh, earn that big profit that, that most of us are looking for on every single trade. So if you look at this, uh, you know, this an entry here and say you were trying to get in on a on a trend trade and maybe your entry was here, look at all of the emotions that you have to endure to maybe hit this target. You know, there's a good chance you you might have gotten stopped out down here or at least you would have panicked and bailed out. So this kind of uh, a pattern is very difficult to trade. Um, so instead what we did is we kind of looked at why does price stop and turn at each point? So I started measuring each point just before price turned. Now, the old way to do it is the way that, you know, the guys with the ticker tape used to do and, and, you know, follow the big boys and follow the trend and see what they were doing. In this day and age that, the, you know, the modern markets are run by these you know, supercomputers, these HFTs and quants and, the, you know, the big banks and, and the, the, the market makers, and they can do pretty much anything they want. Uh, so we're kind of at a disadvantage to try to do it the old-fashioned way, yet people still are trying to do it that way. So what I'm going to ask you to do is to try to change your perspective just a little bit, at least for today, on what you think trading is. We all come in with this very narrow focus. We think that, um, you know, it is what we see. And unfortunately, there's really not a whole lot more information for those of us that are trying to think about getting into trading than what we see. Um, sure, we can read and, and watch videos and stuff, but still, the visual part is what's going to help us form our basis and our foundation for uh, our trading careers. So you look at this, uh, you know, and, and, and this, is, this is a good example. We see that this, uh, uh, if you kept turning right going down these stairs, you would continue to go down, 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 down. But we know intellectually, well, that can't be right. But could my eyes be deceiving me? Um, I only have this one very narrow perspective. I'm only looking at this uh, at, from one angle. And unfortunately, that's how we approach trading. We, we have this one angle that we're looking at, and we don't really allow ourselves to shift one degree left or right because it doesn't fall into our beliefs, okay? It doesn't fall into what we want to be true. Unfortunately, we also t seem to struggle when that happens. So... I'm asking you now to kind of change your perspective. Notice you change one degree, uh, and, and the whole picture starts to change. Things start to become more clear to you on what it is that you were actually looking at. 
this is what I'm going to try to help you with during this event and and in trading uh, in general. Uh, you you kind of need to start looking at it from different directions, different perspectives, which is what a huge aha for me. And that's when things started to kind of come together for me when I allowed myself to kind of think outside the box. One of the first things that I that I thought of was that you know I, I kept being told that I had to be a trend trader and I had to um, trade for large targets. Um, I didn't have a lot of money. I never had a lot of money in my trading account. It just seemed to always be I kept losing whatever I had and then having to refund the account. So um, I had to trade with small lots, and and because of that, and because I'd lost so much money, uh, this this uh, emotional roller coaster caused me to make decisions in my trading that were generally, <coughs> excuse me, that were generally motivated by emotions. Okay, and, and rules tend to go right out the window when emotions begin to uh, uh, to take over. So uh, nobody ever really told me when I was struggling for those seven years and looking for, uh, you know, just some way to be successful. Nobody ever told me that it was nearly impossible which I'm telling you now, it's just nearly impossible for a single or small lot trader in today's markets to make uh, money at trading, trading these long trend trades. Okay, it's nearly impossible and, and statistics are against you if this is what you're trying to do. Okay, statistics say that you will not succeed in overcoming your emotions. And, and emotions are what's making us make these questionable trade decisions. So I decided I'm not going to be able to overcome my emotions. I don't want to stop trading, but I keep hearing that you've got to manage your emotions. And I was having no luck with that. So I thought, well, what if I do something where uh, I don't have to manage my emotions or I can at least reduce it? Um, the the days of the big moves uh, for the small lot trader are over. Okay, these guys, the big boys, have our number. So I decided, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna try something. Step one is I'm gonna try to to start really small. You know, I'm going back to the the drawing board. I was about to give up at my trading, but I decided I was gonna try this little experiment. I'm gonna start small. And instead of trading for money, or money being the focus of my trading, or ticks, or uh, you know uh, whatever, I was instead going to focus on just trying to be a consistent winner. And when I say winner, that means you just end the trade with more ticks or than you started with. Okay, so not how much but to just try to be consistently winning trader. Well, that, I thought, okay, well, that's going to put me ahead of most traders because most traders seem to be consistently losing traders. So if I could just be consistently winning, no matter how much it was, I'd be well and above the other traders, and it would give me something to build on. So then step two of this whole process was stay small, and be consistent okay so instead of trying to do something big like these big long runs these home run hits uh, that uh, of course they're a lot of fun when you get them uh, but they are so few and far between and there seems to be a lot of losses in between so uh, I decided let me let me just get really good at this doing something very small and and consistently win those trades so this was a new challenge that I made for myself. It was kind of a paradigm shift, meaning that it was a fundamental change in my approach to what I was trying to accomplish, which ultimately was trade full-time for a living. The focusing on money, though, was a problem for me. 
So I change some of my underlying assumptions and expectations, which is that shift in perspective, right? So I decided I was going to look for these small daily improvements. And as what I found out, that is the key to the long-term results that I've been able to enjoy. So, um, you know, when I what I did is I started looking at trade, just blank trading charts. I said, okay, so trying to trade the, a trend on this would be very difficult. So I looked at it and I thought, okay, what else is very obvious on this chart? To me, it, it and this, it could be any chart, you know, but to me, it's it's when price seems to be moving hard in one direction and then suddenly stops and changes directions. So I thought, well, that's very obvious. So I decided I was going to start looking at all of the data that I could find that was available just before price stopped and changed directions so that I could anticipate that as an edge. And ultimately, that's what we came up with with our trading system and our indicator. So here's a chart that uh, has no indicators on it. It's a very typical trading day. Uh, nothing really terribly exciting going on. Uh, and this is what it looks like just with no indicators. Now, if you didn't have any technical indicators on the chart, you really wouldn't know what you were seeing or necessarily know that there might be an opportunity here. Okay, so we're going to we're going to look at this now with technical indicators. And we're going to see now suddenly it becomes very obvious that there's an opportunity here. We have this push up from way down here all the way up to here in just what five or six bars. Okay, so that's a big move. We have our momentum indicator. These are these dark, uh, this black bar goes to gray, goes to a lighter gray. These are in real time. These will tell us momentum in real time. Notice that at this point, this bar was a darker color gray. As it gets more momentum, that means we have more potential for exhaustion, which is what is the leader, the leading indicator of a pullback. Okay, We want to read strength so that we can anticipate weakness. Okay, So now we've got this bar pushing up. We've got an oversold condition again, starting to read weakness. We've got our our little uh, indicator right here called a speed tick. The speed tick is reading the order flow that's being processed through the exchange and at the rate it's being processed. We don't care about the volume or the number being processed. We want to know how fast they're being processed. Why do we want to know that? Because that means the big boys are doing it. They're the only ones that have the ability to trade that fast and so if they're manipulating this bar we got to figure they're doing it for a reason and that reason is almost always because they're about to flood the market with a bunch of contracts they're going to come up here and sell now we also have a divergent situation here that suggests that even though we have this trend here, the momentum has actually shifted directions. And when that happens, price almost always follows momentum. So our entry was either at the open of this bar, but if price jumped up, we could actually get an entry here. And we would short this. Okay, This is a very typical trade for us in the trade room. Okay. So why do we trade these pullback trades? They're very predictable in nature. And, and if you watch these uh, over and over and over again, you'll notice how predictable they are. They are generally uh, very precise entries. We have very strict set of rules. It's an either yes or no trade decision. 
there are no shades of gray. That was one of my problems with all of the other trading systems I, I tried to trade over those many years that I was struggling, and that is there were too many variables that could change my uh, entry. So I wanted to reduce that, and I wanted to be able to say yes or no. I have an entry here with no question, with no doubt that I was doing it the right way. There are no chart patterns like double tops and all that that we tried to decipher and then enter into a trade. Uh, it, this, there's no crystal balling. There's no speculating. There's no guessing uh, what you know what the markets are. There's none of that. We just sit and wait. And when everything lines up, we enter a trade. Okay. Very easy to design some very strict trade rules around. Interestingly, that these are are ignored by most retail traders as a potential, and and the reason for that is that if you look at a trading chart, you won't see some of these potentials because it's on a static trading chart. They they you don't you don't know what kind of price action was inside of a specific bar. All you know is high, low, open, close. You don't know about the price action inside that bar. We win a lot of trades inside intra bar where people would never even know to look there. So uh, if you only study static charts, you'll miss this opportunity. And fortunately for us. Most retail traders, when they're studying trading and working on a trading system and a trading plan, they do it based on their static or historical charts. Okay, we don't do that. Some other advantages, uh, small drawdown potential, limited market exposure. That's big for me. That, that was one of my biggest problems when I was a, uh, a struggling trader, and this is where I came up with the fact that we're, you know, we're going to have to figure out a way to do this so I don't have to manage my emotions because I was really bad at trying to manage my own emotions. So my thoughts were, well, I'm, I'm emotional when my money is at risk. And my money is at risk whenever I'm in the markets. So what I want to do is not be in the markets unless I have a high probability of something happening very soon. Not 10 minutes from now, 20, 30 minutes, an hour, tomorrow, next week. Not that. Okay. There are too many market influences that can change over that period of time. Very few market influences will change over the next minute or two. And that's what we're looking for. We want to get in and out and put our money away safely until the next opportunity, okay? Which leads to much less stressful trading. And it's easily quantifiable with a confluence of indicators that get their data from different sources of data, from different sources, okay? So um, we may have all these different types of trading uh, systems or technical indicators that we have on our charts and they all agree with each other that a pullback is very likely and that's that's what makes it really easy for us to make trade decisions so what is a what is a pullback trade so this is a, a very typical chart you notice that we have a nice downtrend here nice downtrend and look what if if you're a trend trader you would look at this and go oh man that looks easy if I had shorted up here I could get down, you know, get out down here. But what we think, what we forget to think of is every time price does this, we get nervous. Every time price does this, we get scared. You know, every time price does this, we want to, we want to take our profits. Oh, I should have taken profits when price was down here. So there's a lot of emotion going on here. What we want to do is take advantage of these very obvious when you know what to look for these are very obvious signals so here's here's one that I've outlined for you we've got the uh, setup here called a rock star setup 
this particular one's actually used to be called a speed flash which became our rockstar setup so i'm going to show you the speed flash first and then we'll uh we'll look at the rockstar so we've got a lot of conditions here first we've got remember our order flow analysis or our processed order flow analysis and we're not looking for numbers of orders the market makers know that most people are looking at volume and when we get into high volume trading most people know what these market makers are doing with volume so they there most of them will try to hide their um, manipulations by waiting until maybe there's a little bit lower volume they're going to do it and low volume but very quickly most of the time so that's what we're looking for that's how they can't really hide from us so we've got the order flow analysis indicators we've got our volume spread analysis indicators called the pullback alert which tells us that the price action inside of those bars the bars were built with what we call a churning price action a lot of buying and selling going on at a particular le price level when that happens if we if we've gone a long way like in, in this circumstance here we've dropped a uh, price has dropped a lot in a very short period of time the sellers are going to become exhausted they're going to run out of sellers the buyers haven't been trading that much and they're just sitting down in this area just waiting this is their point of entry okay so we get into an, an area where they start fighting but the sellers are exhausted then we have a divergent condition that tells us that yes price is dropping but momentum is already shifting directions our momentum uh, our mo meter that was the one that was black and started turning lighter colors it's not on this slide but uh, it's on a different uh, I'll show you that in a minute we have our velocity indicator which shows that there was a lot of price changing going on inside of the bar and then our exhaustion again we're reading strength and then expecting exhaustion so that's what we're looking for an overbought or oversold condition all right so that's our speed flash setup that turned into our rockstar setup okay so the rockstar is a combination of three of those indicators so we're looking inside the rockstar we're being told all of this that the processed order flow process through the exchange meaning not not level two orders but actual orders that were processed suggest that price is currently being manipulated because the orders are being processed faster than us retail traders are able to place uh, and manage our trades okay so price has become exhausted and is uh and exhaustion is setting in due to an oversold condition and although price continues to drop momentum has begun to climb okay so all of those conditions come together to generate this one signal okay so the entry if you saw this signal would be either at the open of this bar or better if you were putting on a buy order if this opened and dropped and you could get this price here so much the better all right so let's look at some more uh, Rockstar setups. And this happens all day, every day. Okay. These, these are not cherry picked. These are just the type of things that we look for. All right. So we got a Rockstar. We got actually two Rockstars here. Notice that this bar has a pullback alert has a uh, speed tick at the open of this bar we had divergence which gave us the rock star and down it went all right and now we're not looking for a huge move we have a sweet spot our expectation is that the trend is going to continue all right again same thing now if you looked at this and you had a static chart that looked like this this one on the left here would you identify this as a good trading opportunity anywhere this is the kind of thing that makes it difficult to study static charts and find good opportunities 
See, this chart is not moving. This, all we know is high, low, open, and close here. So this doesn't necessarily look like a good opportunity. But for us, it was a great opportunity. Because this bar opened. Trying to land right there. This bar opened here. This was our point of entry. This is where we shorted it. Price went down to 48, 49, 48, where we would have gotten filled with our five tick target and done, and we're out. Same thing. Again, we expect this trend to continue, but inside every trend is a series of pullbacks. They're much easier to trade multiple pullbacks than a long trend. And this goes on and on and on and on. Go to our YouTube site, uh, the Intentional Trader YouTube site, and look at our Trade of the Day video series. We've got about 125 of them there. And you'll see the same thing that we do over uh, all day long, every day, over and over and over again. All right? So there's not a whole lot of stuff that you have to learn. These are real-time indicators. We, we consider them very high performance because we read every single tick that's coming in. And the instant a tick comes in that creates a condition conducive for our decision-making, we put a, an indicator on the chart to tell you that that condition now exists and you can now use this information to help you make good trade decisions. Okay? So our point of entry was at the open of that bar. Which now looks like that. Which now is a rock star. So don't get put off by technical indicators. Unfortunately, uh, people can get kind of freaked out when they come in the trade room and they see these little dots and, and things on the charts and they're afraid they don't know what they mean and it'll be too hard to learn but you know you know what you're looking at here right you're you're looking at indicators and we all use them all the time when we're driving you don't get freaked out by all of these gauges and stuff thinking oh i have to know what this is and i have to know what that is and and uh you know you don't you don't have to know all of that information but it needs to be available to you if you need to use that information to make decisions. That's what we do with indicators. Indicators simply tell us that certain conditions exist and that these conditions may be something you want to factor into a decision. Okay? So, let's talk you know, I, I make assumptions that a lot of people understand trading indicators. They come into trading, they see indicators, and they know exactly what they mean. But the fact of the matter is we come into trading without a lot of really good education. We're all looking to make a lot of money really fast. And we start seeing indicators and we start seeing charts and we just kind of fall into it. But let's talk about the basics of indicators for just a minute. Again, this is part of your potentially shifting your perspective on trading. So let's talk about the bare bone basics of technical trading indicators. Okay, so what do you do with them? What are they? Trading indicators do not do your job for you your job of being a trader, of executing and managing trades. They do not do your job for you. They give you information for making good decisions. They're there to make your job easier, just like any other tool that you might use in, in your regular life. Okay, None of these tools are going to do a job for you. They are going to make the job that you need to do much, much easier. Okay? So don't ever forget that indicators only indicate that a condition exists. They're not there to tell you to take a trade. 
Very important. That was a paradigm shift for me. Okay, so we all know what we do with indicators, right? We put them on a chart. That's, that's where the information is, right? That's where our eyes are. That's what's telling us high, low, up, and close, and price action. So let's put them on a chart. Okay, it makes sense. Unless you don't really understand what a chart is. Too many of us, and I ask this question a lot of time in, in other events and in our trade room. I say, what what's a trading chart? And it's amazing how many wrong answers I get on what a trading chart is. A trading chart is nothing more than a graphical representation or what, of what people or institutions uh, think or feel about price over time, okay, over a period of time. That's all it is. And, and don't, so don't try to make it too complicated. So what are the best indicators? They're the ones that make it the, the, that are the easiest to read, that give us the most information about what other people are thinking with the least amount of effort to understand how to use that indicator. Okay? So they're going to help us to measure what people and institutions are feeling and thinking. All right? So that we can understand what's likely to happen next. That's called an edge. Knowing what's likely to happen next. And so we, we have several indicators that we like to use. We talked about the speed tick. All of these are order flow type, gener uh, type indicators. And why do we want to know about order flow? We're measuring strength to anticipate weakness. That's what we do here. That's where the pullbacks happen. All right, so for example, we have a histogram down at the bottom here that we don't actually trade with this on our charts. This histogram is what generates these signals here, these speed tick signals. When the orders are big, this is basically like a speedometer, okay? And when the orders reach a rate of being processed that exceeds this bottom line, we're going we're gonna to generate a speed tick. If it exceeds the second line or, hit, or touches the second line, we're going to still get a speed tick, but it's going to be a different color. And that's going to tell us that uh, that orders are coming in that much faster. So, so think about these lines as maybe 100 miles an hour, 150 miles an hour, 200 miles an hour. Okay. We know that if we get inside these lines, there's a very good chance those orders were processed from some sort of electronic trading, right? Some sort of computer did it. That us retail traders don't have the capabilities of trading that fast, okay? So we also have a, another indicator called a ricochet that also uses that same uh, histogram, but it's more of an accelerated thing. It, it may kind of think of it as like a drag racer, okay, like, uh, um, you know, two motorcycles drag racing. And maybe they don't reach 100 miles an hour, but they go from zero to 60, and like next to nothing. So we're doing that, and we're measuring that relative to the previous bars in the histogram. We notice that when we develop this histogram for the speed tick, that even though some circumstances price didn't reach uh, these lines, yet price still turned. And that was usually from a rapid acceleration. All right, we talked about the pullback alert uh, a minute ago, and, and basically all it is is this. You've got two bars. They look identical. If you're looking at historical data or a static chart, you're going to see these two bars. And to you, if you're studying static charts, those look like the exact same thing happened on both of those bars. But all we know about those bars are high, low, open, and close. That's the only information we have by just looking at them. 
But if you're reading inside the bar, intra-bar information, you read every tick that comes into the bar, you'll see that those two bars are actually very different. For example, this first bar, orders came in, mostly buy orders. We hit, we hit the top, backed up a little bit with some sell orders, bar closed. Okay, this bar. Orders came in, hit the top, came down, came up, came down, came up, came down, came up. Two different, totally different things happened inside that bar. I'm not going to be all that interested in this information. I do want to know about this fighting going on between the buyers and sellers at this level. When we do have that, we're going to print one of these dots. Okay. Divergence, one of the most powerful tools in trading and one of the most underused tools because it's difficult to see unless you've trained yourself to see it. Most traders don't have the time or patience to train themselves and end up missing a lot of divergence opportunities to trade. So for those of you that don't know, divergence is, ba this is a simplified uh, drawing here, but this is basically price and this would be momentum, okay? Momentum and price will typically run together. When they get out of sync with each other, meaning that at this point we still have price dropping, but at this point momentum is actually going up. When they get out of sync, price will almost always try to catch up with momentum. That's the easiest part about uh of, of trading divergence, but many of us don't do it because we haven't had a good indicator to help us see divergence. So we created the McDiver and the flash indicators. Those worked so well that we combined five more momentum oscillators and put them all inside our, our divergence indicator called the Super D. Okay. Now, again, we're measuring strength to anticipate weakness. So we want to measure momentum, which would be strength, to anticipate exhaustion. So we have several indicators for the potential for exhaustion. We've got our OBOS, or overbought, oversold indicator. Shows us where price has become exhausted. The MoMeter helps us understand where the strength is so that we know that the weakness is inevitable and it's imminent. All right. Same thing with our velocity indicator and our NRS zone. If uh, and that NRS zone stands for Naked Rockstar Zone. When price is inside that zone, then there's not as big a chance or as good a chance that there's exhaustion setting in. So if we set if if price breaks outside that zone, it's going to want to pull back in. So outside that zone, there's a good chance that we're going to become exhausted. Right? And we, we do use support and resistance. We have what we call our FT reset lines with our uh, relative strength numbers at the end of the line. Now, we've used three of these very powerful uh, high-performance indicators to create, we combine them to create one super strong and powerful indicator called the Rockstar, okay? So, we've got the OBOS indicator, our speed tick indicator, and our Super D indicator all combining. And when they all are in agreement with each other, we're going to uh, print a rock star on the chart. Now, remember, the rock star doesn't tell you what to do next. Doesn't tell you what the market's going to do. It's going to give you information to help you make decisions, okay? Remember that this helps us read our competitors' intentions or their next move. And if we can anticipate that correctly most of the time, then we have an edge from which to make pretty easy trade decisions. Okay?
So the best indicators are going to help us build confidence, which is going to help us to become more consistent. And we're going to become conditioned to doing things a certain way. All right. So all of that ultimately turns into profits. But we don't want to we we want to focus on the confidence and conditioning and the consistency and the profits will just show up. All right. So we're we use a confluence of the best trading systems out there. We don't use just one. You know, there are volume spread analysis trading systems out there. There are divergence trading systems. There are order flow trading systems. There are momentum trading systems and exhaustion trading systems. Instead of us focusing on any one of those, what if we could focus on all of them and when they all come together and say, hey, there's a good chance price is going to stop and change directions and we get them all to agree that's a really good time to exploit an edge in the markets okay so let's talk about divergence a little bit more this is a extremely powerful part of our decision making process so we you know you have people asking about well uh, do you have hidden divergence signals? Do you have positive divergence? Do you have negative? You know what? I don't even care. All I need to know is that when I have a divergent condition, positive, negative, hidden, not hidden, it doesn't matter. Price is going to try to follow momentum. That's all I need to know. So let's look at, and this is why a lot of us have uh, struggled with adding divergence into our trading. Uh, perhaps you've heard of it. Perhaps you realize how powerful it is. But you've struggled with actually using it. Because most people have to do it with, with something like this. Now, remember I said that when price and, and momentum uh typically on a typical market conditions will typically move together and if you very quickly with your eyes you look at the shape of price right based on these uh, bars and you look at the shape of momentum pretty much the same thing right kind of kind of flattish channeling here we had this drop here we had a drop here kind of bumped up and kind of went sideways and dropped again see bumped up went sideways dropped again then a big up, up, and down, dropped here. Okay, so you you see that these are these are exactly following each other, right? This is where we miss opportunities. All right, so we have both price and momentum are showing a downtrend. Okay, price and momentum both showing a downward trend. Oh, look. Unless you've trained your eyes, you're going to miss that divergent condition. That divergent condition at this point right here, we knew that because momentum was starting to head up, there was a really good chance that price was going to follow it. That's the key right there. That's a divergent condition. The most important thing you'll learn from watching this video is that when momentum turns before price, price will typically follow. That gives us the power. Okay? That gives us our edge. So talk about order flow analysis. You might, uh, you know, a long time ago, you might have thought, heard of that as tape reading. Um, where they would read ticker tapes and they're trying to figure out what the big boys are doing based on these ticker tapes. This day and age, we use time and sales. Okay. And we want to know where the big money is uh, making their moves. Right. And we want to know that because they're doing it for a reason. They can't disguise their movements because of government regulations prohibiting them from hiding their presence in the market. They can't hide 
but they can try to be sneaky about it so we don't see them, okay? So a lot of us don't have any idea what they're doing and what's going on and when they're doing it. But if you know where to look, we can find them and we know exactly what they're doing. So if you study a time and sales window, you can see what's going on. You can see the orders being processed, but you got to know what to look for. So I was looking at all kinds of stuff. And, and, as it, and it was mostly related to numbers. But I noticed something in my study and my research that the numbers were less important than the rate at which this, this uh, uh, price ladder here was moving. That the way the, the rate at which the orders were being processed, when this sped up really fast, something was happening. These numbers were not important, and it took me a long time to figure that out. We're looking for unnatural movement, mean, unnatural meaning that it's highly unlikely retail traders could make the markets move that fast. And if it's not retail traders, it's got to be the big boys. Those are the ones that I want to know what's going on and what they're doing because every time they do it, you can predict, you can count on something specific happening. So, like I said, we measured these, um, uh, this histogram like a, like a speedometer and, and could figure out if orders were going through at a particular rate, miles per hour, whatever, Good chance that price was about to stop and turn. All right. So let's talk about what most of our trading charts look like. Um, I just downloaded these uh, off the Internet. I just put up trading charts and all this kind of stuff come up. And we're all capable of building charts that look like this. And and the the more and more and more stuff you put on your charts, you think you're getting more and more and more information to make good trade decisions. What we're really looking for is just confluence of all of this information that suggests the same thing. So let's say let's look at these all of these charts and do we have confluent conditions? I don't know. Maybe it's kind of hard to tell. So let's just assume, yeah, we have confluence conditions. But is it easy to see and read? Can you make fast decisions based on this information? Also, does this information provide you yes or no answers? Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Probably it provides you with a lot of shades of gray. So I decided I was just going to uh, start over when it came to developing uh, this new trading system and I was just going to wipe the slate clean of everything that I had collected over time. All of the indicators, all of the information I had collected, all of the uh, uh, trading systems I had purchased that just didn't work out for me. Um, everything that I thought I knew, I was just going to start over and start developing some uh, indicators and a trading system that made sense to me, okay? And so I started thinking, you know, one of my problems with trading was that I had at one point 12 monitors that I had to look at to gather all of the information that I had uh, available to me and try to make a good trade decision with that information. So I had to look so many places for this information that many times if I did have a good opportunity I I didn't enter it in time I, I, I ran out of time because I was doing too much analysis to figure out that I had a good opportunity and by then it was too late so I thought well when when I develop these indicators I'm gonna think about I only want to look in one place to make a trade decision and it's got to be a yes or no trade decision. No shades of gray. So if 
fighter pilots, uh, they came up with these, uh, what they call heads-up display. I know they have them for other things now. And they take just the information that fighter pilots need uh, during uh, a maybe combat, uh, you know, a, a dogfight or something. And the information that is most important for making quick decisions is right where their eyeballs are looking right out the the windscreen and I thought that's what I need to do so uh, if you look at the chart on the left and the chart on the right those are the exact same charts with the exact same information the chart on the left though is our indicators giving us yes the condition exists no the condition does not exist type decision making so we decided we're just going to put the information right where you need it for making those trade decisions so if you look at this up here up here do we have confluence well there's a bunch of indicators there so yeah we have confluence is it easy to see how many places do I need to look how about just right here that's it that's all I need So confluence is the key to all of this. All right, so we've got all of these different indicators, 10 different indicators signaling that we have a potential pullback, okay? All of these are included in our Einstein uh, package. Uh, and then we have packages, uh, if you don't want the full Einstein package, you want to get a smaller package um, and maybe work up to the Einstein we do have some smaller packages. We recommend all of these indicators because they are part of the full system, okay, for, and helping you make trade decisions. So what's easier? You know, what makes more sense? Trend trading for, the, for a big win or, 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 or pullback trading? where we can get numerous profitable trades in that same period of time and have a much less stress and, or, and emotion uh, that we have to try to manage. All right, so we appreciate you uh, taking the time to watch this video. Uh, again, this was a remake of a, of a webinar that we had earlier today where we were having some technical difficulties. We are going to uh, offer you a 20% off any bundle package uh, that is on our in our store at this uh, URL. So feel free to go to our store, check out the different bundle options. If you uh, have questions, you'll notice down here at the bottom you see support at theintentionaltrader.com. Also in the uh, in the description below, we'll give you a link to our uh, email. We'll also put the, the link to the special. It's going to expire next week on the 9th at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Use NinjaTrader as the coupon code to get your 20% off. All right. We just did a an event with the uh, NinjaTrader uh, on the Thursday earlier in the week, and so we're gonna we're extending that coupon code. So again, thanks for. Uh, watching the video and uh, please be in touch if you've got any questions or if we can help you. We look forward to trading with you all soon. Bye.